The topic uh, of uh, democracy, of social power, one that can <laughs> speak uh, for a year, but uh, I want just uh, to underline this variable. Uh, the issue of power, and I think uh, power, you know, has a bad name, but uh, mm -hmm. undeservedly. Power is life. Uh, there is no way uh, uh, <coughs> to separate also social and uh, individual power. It's a really a mechanicistic uh, division that obscure our understanding. Uh, and uh, since uh, power, in my opinion, uh, is energy and the capacity for human beings to act and impact uh, themselves uh, and the environment, uh, power per se is not uh, positive or negative, just is, like many things. Unfortunately, <laughs> the use of power not only produces uh, potentially a lot of positive, quote unquote, uh, uh, results, uh, but uh, all through history and present time, we are well aware how many negative uh, uh, results uh, have from the, the probably not evil, but uh, mostly ignorant uh, use of power. Mm -hmm. You know, if uh, our problems uh, would come just from evil people, evil deeds, uh, we would be in much uh, better shape. The problem is the good people do damage a lot. And not because they want to damage it, but they're blind, they're ignorant, they're awkward, and so they think they're doing good, and it would be better they sleep or go having a picnic. <laughs> Our education is one of the culprits, trying to do good but making people blind. Not here we have illustrated this concept. So, since uh, power can uh, re use of power result in positive or negative results, uh, can uh, we have a system uh, of forecasting or diagnosing before it's too late? Uh, and we need the repair job uh, that is much more uh, hard and costly. Can uh, we govern uh, in a uh, you know, sustainable way the use of power? And another thing I think uh, very relevant uh, for the topic uh, we are addressing, democracy, but also governance, uh, sustainable governance, uh, is, in my opinion, to understand uh, that's one of the blindness uh, that uh, people that have power usually incur, how our social and individual selves uh, are socially construed. Um, Kaka in the previous uh, session, uh, said something uh, that uh, to somebody sounded bad. I arrived, uh, I was the rector, or somebody had the power, and in my university, I fired all the professor. Uh, I understood uh, exactly the point, uh, not to punish uh, somebody that was bad, uh, but uh, that kind of uh, social construction uh, was part of the past, uh, and if it would be carried out in the future, it would certainly bring a dysfunctionality. Uh, so, my question to us uh, is, uh, are the present narrative uh, uh, that uh, we use, uh, that uh, we embody, uh, effective for s promoting the sustainable development uh, of human potentiality, uh, of all the people, which is uh, one of the aim of democracy, or not. Because uh, it's not the how democracy is done. That is a mechanistic, a reductionistic approach. It's how we build, build uh, the knowledge, the awareness, and the tools to promote that. And so the problem sometimes I sustain uh, could be also in good intention, but the short sighted. <coughs> So, it's well known and accepted that the social environment, because we don't live in reality, we live in social environments that we call culture, 
that we call law, that we call economy, that we call uh, sexual and uh, relationship mores. That is our reality. It's uh, socially construed. And uh, we have culture because uh, in every given time, uh, a community is epistemic, uh, a community. So human beings have community where they create uh, and relate uh, to the previous uh, construction of reality that is generational. That's why I think, uh, might be a little simplistic, uh, but we say the young people, yes, uh, if they're not burdened by the same <laughs> uh, blindness uh, of the old people. Uh, and if uh, their new awareness uh, is not dysfunctional, it's not just because you're young uh, and beautiful uh, and sexy, you're going to have the, the tools to solve the problem that brought uh, by the past uh, generation. Uh, it has to be... Uh, so we live all in the so-called consensus reality, but again, unfortunately, what we agree is reality can be very dysfunctional. And to give an example, look at how many even admire uh, ancient Greece, uh, the cradle of democracy. Well, 10 slaves uh, for every citizen. And if I wanted to go in a house of citizen and friend, uh, and the friend uh, was absent, uh, went uh, to the forum, uh, and there was the wife, uh, Nausicaa, okay? Well, I'll talk to a slave, and she will say that the boss is out, and I say, can I speak with the Honorable Nausicaa? Of course I could not. I could only have in the atrium a, a tent, <laughs> and Nausicaa wouldn't speak to me. That was not allowing that social construction of reality. She would speak through this dialogue. Please, Honorable Slave, say to the Honorable, Nausicaa, good morning. And Nausicaa would be heard, please, uh, my slave, uh, say to Honorable Zucconi, Zucconus, uh, <laughs> thank you, to, good morning to you, okay? So, we are always talking uh, about democracy, but there should be more precise. Democracy for him, whom? The history of women oppression, uh, of sexual minority, of people with more melanin in their skin, is uh, talking about uh, blocks you know, of democracy, not of democracy. So we should uh, uh, be aware of that. And how we did that? Just easily. We decided, as a consensus, that women were inferior to men. And we kept it that way very democratic, because there was uh, an agreement uh, among all the men, uh, but maybe also some uh, of the women. They raised their sons uh, as uh, misogynists. That was biologically wrong. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm just saying what I believe. So, uh, we had to recognize what is functional and what is dysfunctional. In my opinion, to declare that the majority of citizens is uh, of uh, less value and should not uh, practice uh, professional law is a tremendous uh, dysfunctional and blindness uh, that uh, <coughs> we pay dearly, even today. So, <coughs> not only how we gonna recognize if a narrative, if a culture, some aspect is dysfunctional or not, uh, and uh, if we recognize it's dysfunctional, it's not enough. How are we going to improve the narratives to be more democratic, more sustainable, more inclusive? So, I'm going to end sharing this belief of mine that we need to be aware and also how to, to be aware of how we construe our experience, what we call reality, and the relationship, the relationship with myself, others, and the world. So, can we empower, and if so, how? 
ourselves to construe together more people-centered, not the male center or whatever, but the people-centered, person-centered, sustainable narrative. And if becoming aware, I realized I'm part of the problem, not because I'm a bad guy, but because I, I was blind to it. How can I learn and share this learning to be, instead of part of the problem, part of the solution? Big question mark.